I haven't found lashes that are this, this, oof, I need to speak today. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I'm going to get into my favorites and fails from January and February of this year. I have quite a few favorites to go over, a lot of great new products that I've just tried out, and I have technically it's one fail, but it's a collection that's a fail. Let's go ahead and jump right in. My favorite new lashes that I've tried out are from Velour, and they are the Silk Lashes in Another Shot of Wispy. This is the first time that I've found lashes that are A, pretty durable, like for the price that you're paying, they're around like $15 to $20, I believe. They are going to be durable. I've worn these at least five times and, you know, I just make sure I wash them every time that I wear them and then I put them back in the case and they're good to go. They are perfect. They perfect size, the perfect shape. I only had to trim them down like a little bit. Otherwise, they were the perfect size already just for my lash line. They are the perfect length. I have extremely hooded eyes and I can't wear a whole lot of lashes because some brands version of dramatic lashes go like above my eyebrows, which... <laughs> Just looks ridiculous so i really appreciate the length of these let me do a, a close-up real quick just so you can see them so they really are the perfect length they don't look incredibly dramatic as you can see the hairs are still spread out and wispy but they do add you know more flair than like a typical ardell demi wispy which those are my my favorites before these ones so I have been loving these lashes, but I will have to say my love in part has to go to how nicely this new lash glue that I'm using is working. So I picked up a little kit of both of these lash glues. They are from House of Lashes. I have the eyelash adhesive in clear white and then in black. This is the best glue that I've tried. I've tried the duo lash glue. I've tried the like Ardell lash glue. I've tried the strip lash glue from duo. This is the easiest foolproof lash glue that I've found. It really makes applying your lashes so much easier. So much easier. Like I can get, I'm still a beginner at lashes and I'm still practicing, but I can get these lashes on in a minute and a half. And that's good for me. I used to struggle for like almost 10 minutes with lashes trying to use that other glue and it would slip and it would slide and you would ruin your eyeshadow and it would, it would look crazy, it would look crazy. But this stuff, like, you put it on, you wait 20 seconds, I either wave it around or blow on it a little bit, and then you stick it right on, and it just sticks. Just sticks. That is one thing, though. It does stick really well. So at the end of the day, you can't just peel them off like you could with any other lashes. You really have to go into the cotton pad, soak it in with eye makeup remover, hold it down for a little bit, take them off, make sure you clean your lashes really well. But other than that, this, oh, I am so glad that I found this lash glue. I've already bought a backup of the full size of this one. I was able to get the pack of both of these little minis to try out. It was like $9. Highly, highly recommend this, especially if you're a beginner at lashes. My next favorite has been a new concealer that I've finally gotten a try out. It is the Makeup Revolution Conceal and Define. I picked these up from Ulta and my local Ulta like display was totally like empty, which is awesome. Like I'm glad they're doing really well. Thankfully a few of the lighter shades were still in stock, but both of these that I picked up, I've, there were only like one or two of each of these left. I picked up the shade C5 and C6 just to try them out. Um, they didn't have demos. They did have like a row of demo concealers theoretically there but both of these demos are missing so I kind of went like based on how I saw the tube looking but C6 is like my perfect concealer shade I can use C5 if I mix it in it's just a little bit darker but I have a few foundations that are too dark for me that I can lighten up with these two mixed together so it's got a big doe foot just like the Tarte Shape Tape. So a lot of people have been comparing this concealer to the Tarte Shape Tape. I agree that like the packaging and the doe foot are really similar but when it comes to the formula I don't really see too much you know similarities between them. I like this one so much better. This does not crease under my eyes. The Tarte Shape Tape creases like mad, so I really only use it to spot conceal. This feels a lot more moisturizing under the eyes. It's not as dry. I have combination skin, so I have really oily chin, nose, and forehead, but the rest of my face gets really dry, especially in the winter. So finding a moisturizing medium coverage, this isn't full coverage, you can build it up to full coverage though, especially if you wear a color corrector underneath it like I do every day because my bags are crazy. 
So I really think this is a great alternative to the shape tape, especially if you're having troubles with creasing or with dryness like I was. They have a fantastic shade range. I know a lot of this is still in stock online, but I would check your local Ulta. I'm not sure if these are going to be in like regular drugstores. Okay, my next favorite from the past couple of months has been the Urban Decay Velvetizer Powder. I had this in my collection. I bought it like in the middle of the summer back when it first released and I had used it for a while and then I put it away and I was trying a few more, more drugstore priced powders and then I went back to this and I forgot how much I love this. I'm wearing it today on top of the Makeup Revolution concealer and it really, it's such a high definition, finely milled powder that it really just glosses on and like smooths out your skin. Like it's putting, it's almost like you're putting like a filter on your face. Now that's not always great depending on what you're going for, depending on what you have to do throughout the day. But if you're taking pictures, if you're doing anything up close, if you're doing anything up close and you won't be like sweating too much, I think this is a fantastic, fantastic powder, which is why I've been loving it so much more now in the winter. During the summer, I wasn't a huge fan of this because it looked great when you first put it on. But if you're oily or if you sweat a lot, then it doesn't hold up as great throughout the day. But during the winter on my dry skin, on my on the dry patches of my skin, it just smooths everything out and looks amazing. And my last favorite of the month has been my fixed Morphe 18K coffee palette. <laughs> Now, if you missed the video where I cut down the Morphe 35K and made it into the 18K, I'll go ahead and link that in the cards above and down in the description box below. But I've really been feeling inspired by this palette, as I said like 30 times in that video. But I had a whole lot of fun, you know, getting involved and making basically my own palette out of this. And I've been really connecting with it. Um, I love the looks that I've been getting out of this and I really think it is super versatile and I'm just having a lot of fun with it. All right. So, the big disappointment, the big letdown. Why? The Gothographic collection from Wet n Wild. I picked up the box. This was $40 for all the products inside. I really had a lot of high hopes for this collection. Their mermaid collection was, you know, such great quality and it was so hyped and I saw all the reviews and I saw how great quality everything was, but unfortunately back then I just didn't have the funds to pick up that collection and I didn't see anything in stores and it was limited edition, so now it's gone. Jump ahead till now, they released this new collection. It's got skulls all over it and it's all black and white packaging and I'm all for that. I was so excited and I saw the products and I was like, oh great, there's gonna be highlighters, it's gonna be the lips. I love their what like their cat suit liquid lip formula, they have liquid shadows. I was all over it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, everything sucks <laughs> except for the highlighters. Everything sucks except for the highlighter. God, I was so disappointed. So let's go ahead and go through this collection you know, piece by piece. Let's start with the liquid shadows. There's four of them. There's a pink, there's a purple, there's like a dark purple, and then there's like this really pretty, like, light pink shimmer that I was most excited about. I tried out all of these. They look beautiful when you first put them on, even if they feel a little heavy. Now, when you put this on, you feel like you're wearing a glitter. When I put on my Stila Glitter and Glow, that's what I'm wearing today, you don't feel it on your eyes. You really don't. I wore this one. This is the shade Pure Intention. I wore this just the way I was wearing this today, just on the inner corner and kind of like spreading it out on the edge. I wore this for a full work day and this is what it looked like at the end of an eight hour day. It is wore horribly. It felt super uncomfortable. At the end of the day, my eyes were all scratchy and itchy. It was heavy. You could feel this on the entire time incredibly disappointed. Next we have the liners. Pink. They're all shimmery. They're all streaky. I've been looking for a good white eyeliner for forever. Still haven't found one. The best thing that I've found so far is a liquid lipstick. I don't know what it is about white eyeliners that just so hard to do. But anyway, these hard pass. They're all too shimmery to really do anything with the, the actual... Ooh. Okay, we're just going to leave that one on the floor. 
the actual applicator itself is just it's too flimsy to really do anything with you can't get a sharp line out of it you can't get a lot of product hot mess hot mess now for what i think was really the most disappointing part of this entire collection were liquid catsuit lips i own like eight of these and i love all of those but i know with the formula some of them are hit or miss i did get my hopes up because of how great the formula was on the mermaid collection lips like they look beautiful these not so much this is the only one that i can really use and it's because it's almost close to the shade of my natural lip color and it's really streaky but because it's like a almost like a nude color it looks like a gloss they really should have made these lip toppers if we're being honest because they're so streaky like this is what this should look like but it's not. I'm actually wearing a Jeffree Star liquid lip. This is in the shade Restraints. So this is what I wanted. And instead I got a streaky hot mess. So while all of these look nice like in the tubes, they just come out streaky. And you can't even like build them up. Like with certain lip colors, even if they're not fully opaque, you can build up, you can put layers on. With these, you can't layer them, you can't build them up. They just, not pill, but they just like build up and they crack and... God, I was really excited about this and it just ended up being blah. They have a highlighting stick, which... Eh, like it's okay. I'm never gonna reach for a highlighting stick. It's like really purpley pinky, but I didn't wear this throughout the day. I don't really like stick highlighters to wear because I like putting powder on top and setting my entire face. So I haven't put this through a full day wear test. I mean, it looks nice, but it's not nicer than other powders that I would more, be more likely to reach for in my actual collection. So with all of that out of the way, the only parts of the collection that are actually worth picking up are the two Mega Glow highlighting powders and the loose highlight, which is gorgeous. So these two, we have shades White Raven and Purple Ashes, which Purple Ashes is a little sparkly. Like I can actually see like little pieces of like sparkle and glitter in here. So if that's not your jam, wouldn't really recommend it. The white shade is practically sparkle free. It is almost duochrome-y and I think this one is the standout from the bunch. You can't really see it too well on camera. I would recommend this one. And the loose highlighter in Moon Tears is stunning. I love the fact that it's a little skull. It's a little skull. And the shade itself, it's a nice, like, ethereal gold. I wish it would show up a little bit better on camera but it's a gold that's wearable for lighter skin tones as well as darker ones and my skin tone it pulls i have super yellow undertones it pulls a little bit more pink than i think it would on most people because in the pan it looks really gold but it's stunning i would really recommend getting the loose highlighter because it is super affordable and you get a whole bunch of product in here i'm never gonna use this up and neither no one's ever gonna use this up unless you're putting it all over your body. Unless you're bathing in this, you're never gonna use it up. All right guys, so those are all of my favorites and fails from the past two months. Let me know what you thought down below. Have you picked up anything from the new Wet n Wild collection? And if you did, what did you think? Was it as big of a letdown as it was for me? So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so I know if you want to see any more of these favorites and fails videos in the future. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave and hit that little bell icon so you're notified whenever I post a new video. And I hope I'll see you in my next one. Bye!